Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology 1 Laboratory. My name is Kevin Tokoff, and in this video, we're going to discuss part one of the integration lab that you're required to do for this course. In this video, we're going to discuss the integumentary system, which really consists of the skin, hair, and nails, the latter of those two of which we will neglect. We're just going to focus on the skin, especially since we don't have an explicit lab over this. And really, when it comes to the skin, there's two layers. There's the epidermis and the dermis. The dermis is the deeper layer, which you don't see when you look at somebody. But when you actually look at somebody, the part that you see of the skin, the superficial part, is the epidermis. And the epidermis actually has, in general, four layers um, that we need to go over. And you need to be able to recognize these four layers on a microscope slide image because most likely you're going to have at least one or two questions about this on the practical that's coming up. So let's go over how you recognize these layers. And you learn them basically from superficial to deep. That's the best way to do it. So here's one microscope image right here where they're labeled. So out here is the outside world and this is the most superficial layer right here. This is called the stratum corneum. Notice that the stratum corneum is stained light, more lightly than the other regions. You can see that in this image right here, but also the stratum corneum is stained much more lightly than the deeper regions, okay? So not only is it gonna stain more lightly, but also it's the most superficial layer. And notice every one of these layers, including the stratum corneum, starts with stratum, okay? So you just really have to learn the last word. So the most superficial part of the stratum corneum. Now, if you go deep to that, there's a layer that's very thin, but it stains probably the darkest of any region. This region, when I'm tracing out with my mouse, this is called the stratum granulosum. All right? You can see it much more effectively in this picture down here. So if I start right here, trace it with my mouse, this is the stratum granulosum. Notice not only does it stain a lot darker than the stratum corneum, or really any other layer, but it's also very thin. Okay, And it's just deep to the stratum corneum. So that's the stratum granulosum. All right, if you go beneath this dark staining granulosum layer, you have this very thick, uh, dense layer called the stratum spinosum. And notice, look how much space all of this takes up. It's all of this in here is the stratum spinosum. Now, the stratum spinosum, generally speaking, usually stains a little bit darker than the corneum layer. All right? It does so in both this bottom picture and here. But usually, the stratum spinosum is going to be very irregular in shape. Notice here we have all of these ridges, and it goes up and down, and all of that. All right? You can see the same thing in this picture down here at the bottom. Okay, but the stratum spinosum is deep to the granulosum, all right? Now the stratum basal is kind of hard to see, but all it really is, is it's sort of the basal surface of the stratum spinosum. So if I kind of trace out my mouse right here on the deep surface of the stratum spinosum, this is where the stratum basal is, okay? The stratum basal is the deepest of all the layers of the epidermis, all right? And again, down here you can see that. Here's the stratum basal, kind of where I'm tracing my mouse out, all right? Now, if you were to go deep to the stratum basal, you're no longer in the epidermis. All of this down here, in this picture on the top, and then down here at the bottom, this is the dermis, okay? So you're no longer in the epidermis. So the stratum basal is the deepest layer. So for most areas of the skin, which would include on your arms, your legs, your stomach, your back, on your face, all of that, from superficial to deep, starting at superficial, you have stratum corneum, then the thin, dark stratum granulosum, then the thick, irregular stratum spinosum, and then the deepest is the stratum basal. Now, these two micrograph images are what you would see if you were looking at thin skin, which is in all those places I just mentioned. But there's a couple places in the body where you actually have thick skin. And an example of that is on, the, is on the bottom of your foot. You know that on the bottom of your foot, and if you feel it, it's a thicker area of the skin. Also on your hands, um, sort of at the base where the wrist is, you can feel that the skin is actually a lot thicker there. That's because those areas of the skin traditionally are subject to a lot more wear and tear, a lot more impact, a lot more contact. We walk on our feet and we grab stuff with our hands. So it makes sense that those areas would be a lot thicker. So typically in those areas, those are called thick skin areas. This micrograph image is so, shows where you have thick skin. 
And notice in this case, we have an extra layer sandwiched in between the two most superficial. So instead of having four layers like over here, our fifth layer is sandwiched in between the stratum corneum and the stratum granulosum. Other than that, all the layers are in the same order. So here out here we have the superficial stratum corneum, but notice we've got this kind of very lightly staining region between the corneum and this dark, thin granulosum layer. This layer where my mouse is is called the stratum lucidium. Okay, so the stratum lucidium is an extra layer that pretty much just adds some thickness to that area of the skin, ergo the name thick skin, okay? And it provides extra cushioning, extra layers to make those parts of the skin much more resilient. It makes sense to have those on your feet and your hands. One more thing I wanna mention about, um, particularly where we have the stratum spinosum, these ridges that kind of uh, go into uh, the stratum spinosum and kind of go up and down. These are what we call dermal papillae. Okay, in fact, dermal papillae are partly responsible for your fingerprints. Everybody has different fingerprints because their patterns of dermal papillae are different. You can see these dermal papillae in this image right here on the top. All right, so hopefully this gave you some clear understanding of the epidermis, the layers of them. Make sure you can identify these layers for your practical. All right, and I will see you in class. Thank you very much.